Start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now we have Robbie Adair, and she's going to talk about incorporating custom PHP code into Fabric website applications. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Robbie some feedback. Robbie, take it away. Hi, thank you, Joe. Um, we will be doing incorporating custom PHP code in Fabric website applications. My name is Robbie Adair, and just a little bit about me. If you'd like to know where I'm going to speak, be speaking, you can look at my personal website. It's RobbieAdair.com, as well as I'm on Twitter as Robbie Adair. And my company that I've had over 13 years here in Houston is called Media A Team. If you want to see some of our work, you can visit our website. We're also on Twitter. And then the open source project that we manage is Fabric. And the website for that is FabricAR.com. And our Twitter is FabFreak. What you're going to need if you're going to build a Fabric application is you will need Joomla, the open source CMS, and then you'll need to install Fabric, which is also open source, and so it is free to download and install. So <clears throat> the basic Fabric application build could be done by a non-coder. Um, Fabric provides a, a really nice WYSIWYG interface so that you can do all your database connections. Um, you can create tables. You can join. You can do different types of joins. Um, it's going to generate the forms, the list, the detailed record views. There's validation. The access level controls are actually tied to Joomla's level, access level controls, so it's universal through your Joomla site. Um, <clears throat> and there's lots of things. It, the, the list goes on and on. Now, where you, your audience here is going to, where, where your will excel is that you can take Fabric applications up to the next level with PHP code. So a non-coder can lay down the foundation, but then a PHP coder can actually then add all the customizations that make it just awesome. <clears throat> so there are, <laughs> when, when I picked this subject, I thought, wow, I, I'm really biting off a big subject to be doing in a lightning talk, but um, I'm going to try anyway. Um, and the reason I say that is there are so many ways that you can incorporate PHP code, custom code, throughout your application in Fabric. Um, I told you that it's a WYSIWYG interface. But there are so many places throughout that WYSIWYG where you can put custom PHP code or tie to files. So you can make this a very complex application. For this presentation, I broke it up into five different areas. Fragments that we can put in. We have a really cool calc element. And then PHP files, external. Plugins, so building a full Fabric plugin and then custom views that we use PHP for. The first thing, which are fragments. Throughout Fabric, um, you're going to find places where it says eval. In the screenshot that you see on the right, you'll see where it says email to and eval. Anywhere you see the eval option, you can put in custom code. So you'll see this in this particular instance. This is a form, and this is one of our plugins in the form, and it is an email. So it says, hey, I'm gonna, when they submit this form, I want it to email. Now this one, we could have just had it go to someone, but this was a job application. Depending upon the position they picked would be who, it get, who the email should go to, and there were multiple people that they could go to per position. So we wrote a little custom code in here that evaluated and said, okay, this person is submitting an application, what did they apply for, and who should receive that notification. So we did this in here. Now, I want to make a little note here that all of these fragments that are being evaluated in here is happening within the framework. So anything that you could use in the Joomla framework, you can use in here as well, <clears throat> as well as all the libraries that the CMS is using. 
the calc element. The calc element is like, it's cool. I even put it in my text there. I guess that's not super professional, but that's okay. I think it's a really cool element because it allows us to put in code just on our forms and evaluate things based on other fields that are on there and then return a value. <clears throat> For instance, in this example that I've shown in the screenshots, on the right-hand side, you see the element itself. So this is like no different than it could be a text area, it could be checkbox, a drop-down, but this is a calc element. And we've written a special calculation in there where when someone enrolls, so if they're going to enroll their student into um, a summer program or a school year, then they can actually go in here, select their student. On the student table, we already have the date of birth. So now, when they are going to be applying for whichever year and whichever program, we want to evaluate what age they're going to be to put them into whatever grade or class. So <clears throat> this calc element is looking at the student. So you can see there's an AJAX, AJAX observe element. It's looking at the field student. When they select which student, then it's going to grab their date of birth, it's going to pick whatever date we're trying to evaluate against, and it's going to return the results for us. And this calc element can be just used for of different things. We've, we've just done amazing things with it, including um, doing like live previews of cards as they're building it. PHP files, sometimes you've got to do more than just those fragments I was showing you. you. You need bigger places, you need a lot more code in there, and so you want to just write your own PHP file. Um, so this is inside of the WYSIWYG, there are places where you can say, yeah, I've, I've written my own PHP and it's here, and you can go and select your external file where you have your PHP. There are some benefits to this, obviously, such as if you're doing um, source control, that's going to put it as a separate file for source control, which is really cool. Um, I also like to note in here, uh, at, at all the various places that you can select the external file, sometimes if it needs to happen inside of uh, a process, and this, in this example that we have there, that is a, an e-commerce plugin that a file, excuse me, an e-commerce file uh, that is going to happen when, as you can see above that, process script at the end of the form su submission. So those hooks are built into the WYSIWYG there, so you can select where in the process of this form submission that you're going to actually run your external file. So those hooks are out there in the WYSIWYG. Plugins. Now, sometimes you just you have to do something even more than just one little file can handle, in which case you can use plugins for this. So you can write a whole plugin. We have, if you look in our GitHub, there's I think close over 140 or so different plugins out there already. So I always tell people first look and see, do you see a plugin that does what you want? Or do you see a plugin that kind of does what you want? At least it gives you a starting ground. These plugins then will plug into Fabric, so they can be installed and and turned on in Fabric, and so you can build your whole PHP plugin here. And we are always encouraging coders to please come and write more plugins for us. Or if you have a tool that you would like to have a plugin that would make it work with Fabric, please do or contact us if you would like to. The last major thing I wanted to talk about with uh, custom PHP inside of Fabric is on the views. So everything else we were talking about really is more on the functionality side of things, but uh, this is what I want to talk about now are the the views because the custom views that are built default excuse me excuse me the default views not the custom views but the default views <clears throat> are kind of plain they are they're they're pretty plain they do utilize bootstrap but they're plain so you usually want to create something that's got a little more pizzazz and you can do that by creating new templates and the templates do utilize PHP all through them so you can see in our examples here that at the top there was just so much data that was happening it just didn't look good with a custom view I mean excuse me with the default view so we converted that and made a custom view so we could make very slim columns um, 
do check marks instead of putting yes and no. So you could get a ton of data in a small amount of space by making a custom template. And then sometimes it's just a visual, the bottom, the business directory down at the bottom, you can see there's the, the default view is kind of clunky looking and there's no need for all those labels. And so we created a custom details view. This just has a nice layout, logos, maps, things like that. <clears throat> when you do create new new templates, custom templates, you will need to put them in the fabric folder structure so that there is a place where they go per the type of view that they are. And then you'll be able to select them in the WYSIWYG interface. Uh, I do like to point out, you almost always are going to create custom views when you're going to use PDF. So we have PDF views and you can just use a default, but typically you're going to go ahead and write a custom view for your PDF. The cool thing is, is I can use PHP to do, you know, all kinds of uh, if statements or whatever I need to do in there. Go grab data off of other tables to incorporate them into my PDF, whatever I want to do. So I want to uh, thank Nomad PHP for inviting me to do a lightning talk. I, I hope that this uh, kind of gives a broad overview of how PHP works inside of Fabric and how you can really make very custom applications in there uh, with uh, some PHP code. And the, my talk is on joined in. If you'll leave me comments, I'd appreciate it. And please go download Fabric and play around and get involved on the forums and, and let us know. And if you're a coder or a PHP coder and you want to do some uh, PHP code work out there, please contact me and let me know. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Robbie some feedback.